Okay. As part of the pro-peace community here in Israel, we have an important message. In order to achieve lasting and sustainable peace between Israelis and Palestinians, Hamas must be eliminated. Because since its foundation, Hamas has sworn to destroy Israel and slaughter all Jews in its territory and beyond. It's even written in their founding charter. They tried putting on a moderate face, but on October 7th, they showed the world exactly who they are and who we've known them to be. A murderous and genocidal terrorist organization. Hamas is not committed to reaching a peaceful resolution, nor is Hamas committed to the Palestinian people. Hamas is committed to one thing and one thing only. They are committed to destroying the state of Israel. So I should have asked Rivka for context before playing this. So the one on the left is Muhammad, which is an... Go yeah. on, Rivka, you should... So the guy with the glasses in the black shirt mm -hmm. is Mohammed Zawabi, who is uh, an Arab-Israeli, and I forget the name of the guy in the yellow shirt. He's Israeli, um, and they are just sort of having this conversation. But Mohammed uh, has been very active on social media, very much out there in support of his country, Israel, and uh, has made numerous videos. You can look him up. Uh, young guy, very um, funny, snarky, and very committed to not just uh, Israel, but also he's very solution-oriented young man. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, uh, so he's uh, LGBT, he's gay, he's Arab, and yes. he's Israeli. That's Muhammad. Mm -hmm. We should cover him more. This is amazing. I've been bringing are... his name up every week. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've sent numerous videos, but that's okay. We have, yeah, he's got a lot to say. He, um, he is, um, like I said, he's very solution oriented and he's also, he's an Israeli. So he's pro Israel. He's pro his country. Mm -hmm. He, you know, supports his country. He supports yeah. uh, the, you know, um, getting rid of Hamas. But he also has a lot of um, thoughts about two-state solution and supporting Palestinians. And this is why I like him is he's not just saying these things. He's even come up with some of his own plans. And we can talk about videos like that, too. Now, maybe these plans won't work, but he... He's one of the few young people I hear saying, well, I have a, what about this idea? Or here's how maybe we can do something else. And he gives actual solutions. He's really an uh, interesting young guy. And I, I find him um, really exciting, you know, makes me feel good about young people so, when I listen to him. Go ahead. And then I have a question for Anna as well. Okay. Uh, well, what is interesting is that actually Arabs in Israel are much more free than Arabs in any other Arab country. Like in any other Arab country, you can't be openly gay, you can't openly criticize the government, you can't openly even talk about politics in uh, many of the countries. And he's, here he is doing exactly that. What people even in Egypt and Jordan, like they can't be openly gay or openly criticize the government. That's a and, great and point. Go on, go on, Rivka. I was going to say, that's a great point. And that's actually one of the things that Muhammad talks about why he is so supportive of Israel is the freedom that he has in his own country to be gay, to criticize the government, to talk about, you know, um, Palestinian rights, he, to talk about, you know, anything. Basically, he, you know, wants to, and he, he, um, he highlights that a lot. And I think that's a really, really good point that Anna made is that, there's also videos of people and we had one the last live stream the guy who does the ask just ask a israeli when he went around and talked to arab israelis and asking them you know if they like living in israel do they like the government and they all said yes i have freedom here i have the ability to do things that i couldn't do if i was in gaza or any other uh muslim country 
Yeah, and uh, I also want to state that they have freedom also in politics. Like they have the uh, there is an Arab uh, party in the in our uh, political system, and mm -hmm. technically, an Arab can become a president in Israel. Mm -hmm. Like if he has the majority of votes and is able to build a coalition with other parties, then yes, an Arab no. can be become a president in Israel. Like now. this is this is actually. Like maybe, maybe, um, maybe it won't happen soon because we see that Netanyahu and his whole government is just like their religious are extremely um, pro Netanyahu. How I would say, um, I I don't really think that a political change is as easy in Israel uh, as it maybe used to be in the past. But uh, anyways, the Arabs they have every single right uh, a jew has uh, a jewish citizen has and actually they have more rights than jews because they don't have to serve in the military and for example like i study in a, lo a little bit religious um university so i have to take several courses about judaism and arabs get to choose if they want to study about judaism or want to take courses unrelated to judaism like the same amount of courses but uh, in different fields, for example. Now, so. now, Anna, I, I have to say, because this, this is a little shocking to me. Are you, are you saying that in, in Gaza, there is not a, a Jewish political party? Are you saying that that doesn't exist? Is that what, what about, what there about like a single Jew in Gaza? There oh, is not a single okay. Jew in Gaza. Okay. And I don't but think there is kind of sounds like an kind of sounds like an apart kind of sounds like an apartheid. I don't know. Actually, oh, worse than yeah, oh. it does. Especially <laughs> oh. how they treat Christians and other and any other right. potential religious minority. Oh wow! Right. But that okay. But that couldn't be okay. But that couldn't be similar to other Muslim majority countries where they're ruled by a very strict you know, Islamic idea. That couldn't be the case in like Saudi Arabia, right? I'm sure there's, it, am I, I wrong? I'm, I'm wrong guys. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's I'm sorry. I, I just, like, uh, I've been hearing, I've been hearing how peaceful know, Islam is. As far as I know, there is no Jewish community in Saudi Arabia or in Egypt mm. or in uh, Algeria. Mm. Like maybe there are still in oh. Egypt, like a couple of Jews or something like this. There's an yeah. organization that keeps, that keeps a count, and I think they said at last count it was like seven in Egypt or something. Literally under under ten. Oh my god! And the same in Iraq. You know, uh, there was yeah. one in Afghanistan. He finally emigrated. His wife and children had years before, and they he finally did. But um, I I think that that the point that about having. Um, you know, no religious minorities in other in a lot of these other uh, Middle Eastern countries is actually really important to highlight because yes. people are constantly saying all these things about Israel. But, you know, there's two million Arabs. There's, you know, thousands or hundreds, maybe I think a thousand of mosques, churches. There's Christians, there's Buddhists that you can be free to be an atheist, gay people actually from West Bank and Gaza come to Israel for asylum. Israel, you know, helps, the, you know, gives them safety. Um, sometimes they don't stay there, but they know that they can go there, you know, uh, as a stepping stone. So I think that All right. is important yeah, to talk about. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, so I have a question from Anna. So we see like this Mohammed uh, guy from here. The true peace Hold on. We saw Muhammad here talking about being pro-Israel, um, having these narratives. Is it how safe is is it for Arabs in Israel to come out and be so so pro-Israeli and so anti-Hamas? Um, like Muhammad, I know there are some Arab, Arabs in Israel that might be radical and anti-Israel even though they're Israeli citizens themselves. Is it safe for someone like Mohammed or is it fine? What do you think? Well, it depends on their community. Like some Arab villages may, may, might be very much against it. 
and treat them mm. as traitors and uh, expel them from the family for being gay and um, such things. But like maybe in regard to Israel specifically, like the Druze are usually very pro pro Israel, and I think that in, if you live in a Druze village, which, which they are also Arabs, so then it's it will be fine. Of course, if you live in a in a Jewish city or even a mixed city with both Arabs and Jews, then you will you will be fine. Like nobody is going to hurt you. Um, like I certainly think that uh, Arabs here are more free uh, in inside Israel to express their ideas and also being openly gay than than in uh, Egypt, for example. Like oh yeah, obviously, obviously, obviously relative to Egypt. Even, even yeah, if, yeah. Like, but I'm thinking more reason, like I'm not thinking more. That, I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking like relative to Egypt. I'm thinking like relative to, I don't know, Canada, for example. Um, you know, is like, it less safe for like, yeah, go on. The only reason they might be in danger for being like gay or being pro Israel is if the local community around them is rural mm -hmm. and against these uh, ideas. Like if their family mm -hmm. is extremely anti gay then of course it might uh play a role in in their safety right um i i wanted okay. to say really quickly i think that it's very important to highlight this because i've ran into people in real life and on social media who if i say arab israelis you know uh they say there's no such thing it's not true it's you know then everybody you know there is suffering they hate the they hate the country but and i and and so i think it's really important to bring people like muhammad and others up because this is a very easily verifiable fact that mm. people you know are refusing to acknowledge because it somehow shakes their perceived narrative you know <laughs> when when people say that there is no such thing as arab israeli like come to the cafeteria in my university it's a jewish university but the cafeteria there is like baghdad okay <laughs> everyone speaks arabic the workers speak arabic a lot of arab arab students just sit together and kind of chat <laughs> so it's like well, and, walking through the streets of Baghdad. <laughs> and what what y'all are what y'all are pointing out is again at, I mean, at like the that core is not that nice. of. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Okay. The, 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 what what, what y'all are pointing out and and highlighting is is the core of anti semitism, right? It's it's when somebody just decides to lump all of these people into this group and say you're all like this right and that's what they're doing they go what arab israeli well, well that's not possible because you 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 have to be jewish and you have to be one of those western occupation you know come over like last year like steal somebody's land kill a bunch and of ashkenaz cows. too and ashkenaz <laughs> right so it's like it's that's when 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 we talk here about how deep the roots of anti-Semitism run, this is what we're talking about. When you say, when when you hear somebody say something and they just say, you know, just real casual statement like, well, no, there's no Israel, you know, uh, uh, Arab Israelis. Well, there's no, you know, Arab Jews, you know, well, Jews all like this or whatever, or all Jews that that's anti-Semitic, you guys. That's what we're trying to point out and fight against. So stop doing that. If it's surprising to you that th that's a, a single person could be both Arab and Israeli, you might be a bit anti-Semitic, guys. You might want to look in the mirror. It's okay. It's okay. Just stop doing it because, you know, it's not really okay. Just fix it. <laughs>